Our first step is to configure the phone to make it match the configuration in the SIP config file. You will find a SIP config file, which is a simple text file, in the directory slash etsy slash asterisk. If you open up this file using whatever your favorite editor is, you will find many channels in there. Unless, of course, it's a blank file and you're getting to configure it for the first time. In my case, I have prepared three channels for you to look at. And I've named the channels 2001, inside of square brackets, 2002, and SIPTRUMP. And they're pretty self-explanatory for what each one of these channels are to be used. Where 2001 and 2002 are host dynamic, because we expect the phone, which obtained an IP address by DHCP, to register and therefore supply these particular channels with the IP address that they happen to have at the moment. But the SIP trunk channel would be an example of a SIP trunk where the IP address of the device that we're trunking to could be supplied by a fully qualified domain name or domain name or just static IP address if you wish. We will take a look at this at a future time as well under the category of SIP trunking. Let's consider ourselves fortunate if we can figure out how to get a call to come in the 2001 channel, pass through the appropriate context, and go back out a 2002 channel and ring a phone. So in order to marry up the phone with the SIP channel, the first step is to name the channel. So I named it 2001 and then in the phone under a user ID, whichever phone you're using somewhere, there will be a user ID entry and you'll enter 2001. The example that you see right here is taken from a Linksys phone and I've just carefully made these two match. If they don't match, this isn't going to work. You'll never get a successful registration. And speaking of a successful registration, you also have to match up the passwords. One more thing, the phone is not gonna know the IP address of the asterisk system unless you supply it somewhere. There's a few different ways to do it. The easiest way is to simply type in the IP address which you see I typed 192.168.200.119. But there are far better ways. If you study the DNS and you use a locating SIP service or even a fully qualified domain name would be better than typing in the IP address. Uh, I, I'm a big DNS fan, so um, if it weren't for the fact that I'm trying to keep this simple, I would have clicked yes to both of these. And I would have been using a DNS SRV record where I would then simply type in the domain name up here and then I would let the DNS supply the IP address. But these three things, one, two, three, are mandatory to get the phone to register to the SIP channel. Now, you're probably, at least I hope you're wondering, well, wait a minute, Stu, I see the channel ID and I see the secret, the password, but Where's the IP address? Well, I'm not showing it, but in the SIP config text file, there would be a bind entry that would say bind equals, and then the IP address and port address that the asterisk system will be listening for SIP traffic. So those three things must match. One more thing, however, just to make the discussion complete. The fourth item, you should really configure a dial plan on the phone so that the phone will know when you're finished dialing. So I've given you a real simple dial plan here that if I dial two plus three digits and then you see the pipe there, which means or, and then we see a nine followed by 10 additional digits where X means any dialable digit. So if I dial a 2000 number or if I dial a nine plus 10 digits, this dial plan will be satisfied. And upon satisfying it, a SIP invite will be sent to the IP address that we have specified on the phone where when the inbound invite comes into our SIP channel, the next step is to map it to the appropriate context. Take note in this particular case, if a call comes in to channel 2001 from the IP address of a phone which is registered, you must specify a context. This is used for inbound traffic to the channel. So we have the phone sent an invite to the SIP channel the SIP channel will reference a context 
and send the invite now using the proprietary asterisk protocol into the dial plan. Or if you prefer to see the, how the flow would be up here, we saw the invite coming in as a SIP message. Then we see the context assignment, which would direct using asterisk proprietary to context big guy. Now, if we take a look at the configuration of the context big guy, which would be found in extensions.conf file, which is a text file, uh, which by the way, you would also find in slash Etsy slash asterisk. There is a context called big guy. Do not confuse a context with a channel identifier. The context big guy here is found using the, okay, I admit it's using the square brackets. It sort of looks the same, but, but it's not. It's called a context in extensions.conf. And within a context, must be all the dialed numbers that we expect asterisk to be able to process. So I made judicious use of include, which I hope you do as well. So my first step is to begin the processing. Uh, now bear in mind, we said that 2001 just dialed 2002. So we saw the invite go to the channel module. The channel model sent the invite into big guy and big guy context begins by looking for the dial digit 2001 in the local context where we see that the first entry is a little underscore. Now underscore in asterisk means what follows me is a pattern. The nine taken literally as the first digit must be a nine. The next digit is an N that's understandable because of that underscore you see. So the N means I am a digit of a value two through nine. I will never be a zero or a one. The X is I am any digit zero through nine. So this would be an example of a North American seven digit number because believe it or not, some places in America you can still dial seven digits. But uh, whatever the case, uh, it didn't work out because uh, we dialed 2002 and that is definitely not going to match 2002. So we go back to the big guy and we cross out the include that didn't work out this time. So we see the next one is include North America. So up we go to North America that does not match 2002. So right back and we see the next step is world. So we go up here to the world, no match there. So we come back and the next step is include internal. Now if this doesn't match game over. But it turns out that in the internal context, there is an extend equals 2002. Then we see the little comma and a priority that must be a one. You see, there's other options. We could make it step one would be to try to ring this. And then step two would be to go to voicemail and step three and so on if you want. But to keep this nice and simple, you must put the comma, one comma in there, uh, that's the priority, followed by a verb, in this case, dial, which means connect to. Now, hopefully you remember this from a discussion. The SIP, S-I-P, is the name of a channel module, which of course, we do have a SIP channel module. And then the slash, which is mandatory, uh, and to the right of the slash must be the name of a channel which by the way, we are going to have a 2002 right there. So right here is all the information that the dial plan needs to send this particular call back to the SIP channel and reference channel ID 2002. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.